two answers to that question in there. <laughs> Tell you, my uh, contract doesn't run out till the end of the month. Good. We can start picking your milk up the first of the month. Oh, okay. You can make out <laughs> just make out a check for seventy-five dollars to the National Farmers Organization. Right. I want to congratulate you on a wise business decision, Mr. Strait. Do you know of any progressive farmers like yourself in there that we can go contact? You better believe it. I got Cucumber Farms down there. He's in a pickle, too. We need to get down there and see him. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, as you'll notice, and that's all it is, a lot of places that people tell you that, is you get some of my neighbors, you get, uh, you'll never get the job done, is they're wanting to know if we're growing. That's all there is to it. They want to know if we're growing. And a little misconception we do a lot of times when you go down the road and say, uh, I'm here today because we're trying to put production on. That's a false statement, folks. You go down the road and you tell the person you're here today because we are putting production on. Be positive about it and you're denoting growth right there. When you tell him we're trying, he'll say, well, you guys have been trying for 25 years. No, we are putting production on the trucks. It'd be a positive statement about it. The next one is dealing on past performance. Is there still a little bit of that out there? Saying, oh, you guys are the one that dumped milk, shot cows, done all this kind of stuff. All he's wanting to deal with is change. He wants to know if we're still doing it or have we changed and doing something different. Dave Casino, which is in the upper Midwest uh, marketing area for the dairy department, which includes Minnesota, South Dakota, part of Iowa, and Nebraska. Is that correct, Dave? Correct. Okay. Well, Dave, last time I shipped with you guys in 1971 and 72, I had to wait quite a while for my check. It was a little late. I know how you feel. A lot of other dairy farmers such as yourself felt the same way, but when they put their milk on the truck with the new National Farmers Organization, they found their check was very prompt and they were able to enjoy additional benefits of the National Farmers Organization, such as a nationwide marketing system. Yeah, the nationwide but Dave, Dave I, I just can't afford to ship with anybody that can't pay on time. If I understand you correctly, Mr. Strait, you're asking me what changes we've made to assure you that your check will be prompt. Is that your question, Mr. Well, Strait? Well, yeah, you get on time now. Huh? Mr. Strait, we've streamlined our billings to the buyers, which means we get them out earlier and our pay gets the, from the buyers gets in quicker, as well as the fact we have a much better selection of buyers today so that in the past seven years, our checks have consistently been out on or ahead of the scheduled time. Julie Luby here at Luena, Iowa, was oh, very. Con Julie. You do? Yeah. Good. A progressive young dairy woman, isn't she? Boy, she is. Runs a tight ship down there, man. And she has her bills set up on such a schedule where she has to have her check on the day due. And it was a concern before she moved her milk in March of 81 when she did move it because she wanted to see this price level moving up through collective bargaining. Mm -hmm. When she moved her milk, her check has been there on or ahead of the scheduled day every month consistently since. And being able to participate in a nationwide marketing system to move price in today's economy is important, isn't it, Mr. Strait? Boy, you ain't a kidding, Dave. And that's the only problem I ever had with him, because your concept is totally right. Mr. Strait, would you be ready to be picked up on the 16th, or would you prefer to wait till the first of the month? Hmm. Better wait till the first, Dave, so I can get, you know, get out of my contract, okay? Okay. And the milk check comes in the name of? The farm name. The farm Dave, name. Dave, it's uh, Pullhard Farms. Whole Hard mm -hmm. Farms. And today's date is the 7th or is it the 8th? It's the 8th today. December 8th, 1982. Mm -hmm. And your county is? Pardon? The county here Adams. is Adams mm -hmm. County. Uh, your address? Route 3. Uh, town? Corning. Corning. Mm -hmm. Zip code? 50841. Your social security number, Ted? Have you been listening? I've told these other guys. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't write it down, Mr. 482-660020. Okay, and if, uh, how many cows do you milk? 135, sir. And your yearly production is about? No, they're, they're pretty good herd average, about 13,000 cows. And your grade A? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you just okay this right here. Alrighty. Congratulations on your wise business decision, Mr. Strait. Mm -hmm. And if there's any of your neighbors or people in this area you feel would also like to take part in a program like this, I could certainly be, I'd be glad to see them. I appreciate it, Dave. Come on in, I'll get you a list. Okay, and if you'll stop by the car on the way out, I'll give you a cap, and I also have some gate signs, which I'd be happy to put one up out at your gate if you'd like. Well, hey, that's great. 
Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, very good. As you'll notice, the only thing that was bothering me is I had a little bit past experience problem with the late check. Now, it can come in many different forms of change. Changing from uh, the milk dumping, changing from a, a late check, changing from credibility, whatever it may be. You just got to show them that the National Farmers Organization is what it is today, is what counts. There's nothing in the past that you can do anything about. Okay, the next one is also dealing with a change, but in the form of contentment. How many of you have run on to the people, say, you know, I'm just satisfied as a devil where I'm at. I've been shipping this local co-op down here for years and years and years and years, and my granddaddy did before me, and I just don't want to change. Is that out there? Okay. Kenton Bailey is the area director of training out there from the New England states. Uh, Kenton, which include uh, Maine, uh, Vermont, parts of New York. What else? Wherever they'll send me. Wherever they'll send him. Okay. I don't know, Kenton, I'm just pretty satisfied where I'm at, my local co-op. I've been shipping for there years and years and years and years, and uh, my daddy did and my granddaddy did before that, and I'm, I'm just pretty well satisfied. I, they give me good service. I just don't want to change. Let me see if I understand what you're asking me, Mr. Strait. Uh, what you'd like to know is, is how you could take advantage of our collective bargaining programs and get the extra money that the National Farmers Organization is uh, extracting at the marketplace so you can get out of your dictatorial co-op that you've been a member of for so many years. Okay. <laughs> well, if he's going to be smart with me, I'm going to be smart with him. <laughs> you see, in this, a few years ago, we, we came into this area and we started promoting our collective bargaining programs and a lot of the farmers didn't listen to us. And within a year's time, they had agri-shaft hung around their necks. We've been in this area now for about a month, two months. We've been holding meetings. We've been talking to young progressive farmers like yourself. And all of a sudden, the farmers like you say the same things that you do. And then when we explain our collective bargaining programs, they're just like everybody else. They already got the extra bills in their pocket. Now they want some extra money to pay them. So we're explaining our membership agreements and other tools that we use to in our building our collective bargaining programs. And so we'd like to show you that if you want to come along with the rest of our new progressive farmers in this area, that we'll have that milk truck that's running up and down the road available for you because, see, you only have one alternative now. You had three here a couple of years ago. You had one independent, a pretty decent fellow, and then you got an independent that's pretty whiskey, then you got Agrishaft. The one that was a pretty decent guy went bankrupt, right? Mm. The risky guy is still out there, and Agra Shaft's got you just like that. <laughs> now, you see, when you put your production in the National Farm, first of all, you've got to become a member of the National Farmers Organization take advantage of all these programs. Mm. Now, see, today's date is December 8th, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. How do you make out, how do you normally do you, excuse me, how do you, uh, See, I just blew it. You're going to join anyway. <laughs> do you do your business normally in a farm name or? Farm name. Farm name. Let's see. What, what is that farm name, Mr. Stray? Antibody Farms. Antibody Farms. Or that Antibody is, Acre, excuse me. I see. Mm -hmm. That's not antibiotic. Acres. No. no, no. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Uh, this is Orange County, Vermont, correct? Yes, it is. Okay. And your cell block number? <laughs> Route 3. Well, so, no, I mean, sometimes they refer to it as Social Security. I see. Well, see, I didn't understand. Oh. Uh, 482-660020. Very good. Now, as we're building the National Farmers Organization here in Vermont, we don't like to go out and ask other people to participate in something that we don't participate in or uh, to make sure that they know we'll always be around. We make sure we put our name right down here first so that you'll know who to get in contact with. And then oh, after we've got that. your address and everything else, if you just okay that right here. This is just your membership agreement. This here. is our membership agreement. That's correct. It just allows you to bargain with my product, I think. You know, it allows you to be a member of the most progressive and aggressive organization in rural America oh, and I all see. over the country. Okay.
Very good. How do you normally do your business, Mr. Strait, with cash or with check? Check. You can just make that out to the National Farmers Organization, yeah. and you've just become a member of that new, aggressive, progressive group of farmers all over the country. Now, we're going to put this right into effect so that you can start taking advantage of that. And in our milk program, you probably know Ken Appleton up the road. He ships 20,000 yeah. pounds of milk every other day. Mm -hmm. You see, Ken Appleton had an advantage over you because he had 20,000 pounds of milk going to the marketplace. Yeah. But he didn't have enough bargaining power with his 20,000. You ship 8,000 pounds of milk a day to the market, mm -hmm. but you didn't have enough power at the marketplace. To Evidently not. Kitchen. I mean, we're still sitting there with low prices. Huh? Now what happens when Ken Appleton takes his 20,000 and Bob Atwood takes his 6,000 and you take your 8,000 and 10 more neighbors down the road take another 50,000 and put it together and then that block of 70,000 pounds of milk is added to another 100,000 pounds of milk, would we have some bargaining power at the marketplace? Oh, you'd think so, wouldn't we? Mm. How do you have your milk check come, Mr. Stray? Same way as the membership made out to And what was that idiot name? Antibody Acres. I keep wanting to write antibiotics. You don't have any antibiotic problems, do you? No. You got a good quality insurance program. Oh, we you? sure do. They either ship grade A or we dump them. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. Strait, I understand here that uh, you milk 150 cows mm -hmm. a year. You must have a lot of cow cows and bob calves on this farm. Yeah, quite a few. I got a pretty good calling operation. I believe in that. Well, one of the calls. extra benefits, the extra fringe benefits you get through the National Farmers Organization is that you won't have to take your cows and calves any longer down to the one outlet you've got here in this mm -hmm. river valley. Mm -hmm. You know, your gambling casino. Yeah, I know. They've been ripping us quite a bit. Sometimes known as a commission sale. Yeah. See, we have a cow cow program where you can ship your cows and your calves with us and you can make enough money on a couple of cows to pay that year's dues so it doesn't cost to belong to NFO, it pays to belong to NFO. Well, what that sounds doing? like a good idea, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Something everybody ought to be doing, hasn't mm -hmm. it? So we have uh, the ability to take your cows and your calves and add them to hundreds of farmers in Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, New York, and you know just as well as I do, if we could have a block every day of a thousand cows and a thousand calves going through the NFO system, there's going to be slaughterhouses out there that want to make one telephone call and get in on the bidding on those thousand cows and thousand calves a day. You're doing the same thing there with the cows you've done with the milk, ain't you? Uh, that's right. Hmm. Sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? Yeah, it is a good idea. How many cows would you like to ship with us next week? Ten or twenty? <laughs> I don't call radically that fast, sir, but uh, I call pretty much every month. I'll have about Eight, I believe, next month, though, that I would have ready to go. Very good. Mm -hmm. Now, Where do I take them to? Well, we've established a collection point right down here on Ken Appleton's farm. Okay, I've farm. seen that. That's where I'll... Okay, Very good. It's no problem. That's close. Now, one other thing before I leave you, Mr. Strait, I'd like to uh, emphasize to you, there are two things we guarantee every member in the National Farmers Organization. We guarantee we will work with you and for you if you will help. This isn't something for nothing. One of the other fringe benefits you're going to get next week, we're having a dinner meeting at the Chimes Restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I would like to extend to you an invitation for you and your wife and your 14 children <laughs> to come to this meeting. We guarantee you we'll feed you, weed you, and we'll even brainwash you a little bit because we'll give you some of the facts and the truth. Now, if you can think of anybody that's young and intelligent and aggressive like you are, mm -hmm. You invite them, too. And this afternoon, or I'll leave my name and telephone number with you, and I'm available on a 24-hour call, 24 minutes, in fact. Sometimes we get here before they even know, like you. You didn't know I was coming, <laughs> did you? And we'll talk to your neighbors, and most every one of us has got a friend out there or several friends out there that are in farming like we are. You know one in particular, a real close mm -hmm. friend of yours? Yeah, I got two brothers on right down the road here. Either one of them yet haven't taken advantage of the mm -hmm. National Farmers Organization, have they? No. Would you like to have them take advantage well, of it, Well, definitely. Too? Would you tell me? The larger we get this block, the more chance we've got. Yeah, so absolutely. Let's what time do you want me to come and pick you up? Or would you be available right now to get I down to see? I right Good. Let's not wait. The farm you save may be your own and theirs, too. <laughs> Thank you, Jim.
Basically what he done on the change of Reluxa's change, he hadn't turned on my receiver yet, see, and that's what you've got to do. You've got to explain the additional benefits that the National Farmers Organization has that they aren't receiving right now. And he went into collective bargaining with it. First thing he done, if you'll notice, he signed me as a member, right? When they sign a person as a member, then he happens to step over onto your side and he's more willing to listen to the information. He's going to take me to the county meeting now and give me everything I need to know and the whole works. Good. There is one other place, though. You can handle the objection formally and all the questions that they have, but there's one better place to do it, and that's in your understandable presentation. <coughs> in your understandable presentation, if you happen to know that there's a certain objection out there in the country, handle it before it comes up. Give him the answer before it ever comes up, and you've taken the pressure off the guy to have to come forward and object to you, too. Number one, what we're going to do now is I'm going to have Joe Paris, which is a regional director from Ohio, come up and give a full presentation from knocking on the door to the congratulations when he leaves, the whole thing. And I want you to note and listen to this in your own mind when he's using the art of nail downs and everything else and the positive presentation of how hard it is to really object to what he's going to be giving you. Okay, Joe? Yes. Mr. Strait? Yes, sir. Mr. Ted Strait? Mm -hmm. Mr. Strait, I'm Joe Paris. I'm with the National Farmers Dairy Department, and I'm here to show you how to put more money in your pocket without increasing your workload. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Sounds good to me. That NFO? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Strait, could uh, you want to stay here on the porch, or shall we step into the kitchen where your wife can hear this also? If you're going to put more money in my pocket, I know Mama's going to want to hear about that, so come on in. Mr. Strait, I couldn't help but notice as I came up your lane there, those beautiful harvest stores you have. Mm How -hmm. those working for you? Pretty good, aren't they? <laughs> I've never been so disappointed in my life. Ever since I put them up, I've had nothing but trouble with them. You know, Mr. Strait, I understand how you feel. But if you, as a farmer, had designed that system and put that together to done just exactly what you wanted, wouldn't it? Yeah, because I know what I wanted in the That's business. right. Well, that's just like National Farmers. It's a program that was designed by farmers, for farmers, to raise prices and get them cost of production, plus a profit. You could use a profit in your operation, couldn't you? Oh, yeah. Mr. Strait, let me uh, show you what we've been able to do over the last few years in building a structure that'll get you that profit. If you notice this map, one of the important things we want to point out on that is it's not just in a local area, but we have a program in every major agricultural producing area of the country. If we simply came into your local area here in Iowa and organized farmers right in this local area and didn't go anywhere else, by that organization, as prices increased, it wouldn't be long till the production from other areas would be moved into that area because of the differences in prices. And in that one area, you would have an oversupply situation and it'd drive your prices down. So you've got to be nationwide. And you can see the importance to you to be part of a nationwide system, can't you? Simple, isn't it? Sure is. The other thing this map shows you is that we're not just in dairy production, but we're also an all-commodity organization, bargaining in every major, every major commodity that's produced on farms. The reason for this is we simply came out and organized dairy farmers, didn't do anything for those grain farmers or the cattle or hog producers. It wouldn't be long till they would want to get involved in the dairy industry so they could have an, a profit in their picture also. You can understand that, can't you? Yeah. And Mr. Strait, by doing that, uh, we're able to not only affect the price of milk, but the price of cull cows, the price of grain, the price of hogs, and other commodities all at the same time. That way you can specialize in the dairy industry, and the man that's got his operation designed for the production of hogs and cattle can stay in his and make a profit. And that's important to you to be part of an organization like that, isn't it? Well, you bet. That's essential. Mr. Strait, when we first started our programs, we run across an idea called collective bargaining that we knew was going to change the whole picture and enable us to drive prices up to where you had that profit. Let me explain by a couple of pictures here what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. First those, of all, those plants and co-ops and stuff around there are just plants? Or these pictures could just represent dairy plants. They could represent a uh, packing house or a grain elevator also. It doesn't really matter. Since we're talking to you as a dairyman, we'll just say these represent dairy plants. I'm a director on the co-op dinner. Good. Glad to hear that. We found that whenever you would come into an area before we established a program there, that in any given area in the United States, plants were buying production from producers. We found by going around and talking to these producers a couple of things about the area. First of all, regardless of where the producer shipped his milk, there was very little differences in pay price. Mm -hmm. 
Everybody got paid essentially the same thing. There was no competition in service. Everybody performed the same kind of services. And about the only time a producer ever switched his milk from one company to the next was if he got mad at his field man or the hauler run over his dog. You can remember yeah. that, can't you? Yeah. Well, Mr. Strait, the first thing we had to do was find a plant that would buy from a group of organized farmers. Not farmers selling individually, but an organized group on a contract. We would talk with these plants, and eventually we would find one of them that maybe was only running 90% of capacity in that plant. <coughs> and by adding this increased production in there, it saved him money, and he was willing to pay a premium. We would write that into a contract, take that contract to our members, where they would hold a meeting and ratify that. And let's say that that contract took effect January 1, and that block of milk was formed and moved out of the old marketing system through national farmers under that contract into that plant. That changed that picture substantially at that point in time. For now, you have a situation that looks like this. You've got a plant here that's got this established block of national farmers' milk in it. Notice the big smile on his face. Mm -hmm. His efficiencies come up, and he's making more money than he was before and was even willing to share part of that back with those producers, so their price came up. The other plants that lost money, uh, lost milk, because many of these producers came from these other plants, some may have already been going into this plant, but a lot of them came from these other plants, could react in only one way, and that was to raise the price to their producers so as to discourage any more of them from breaking off and joining this organized block, and they even hoped to encourage some of these to turn around and come back to them. Mm -hmm. They simply came out and said, if you'll just come back, we'll give you 10 cents more or 25 cents more, whatever the case may have been. But in every single area, this is what happened. The effect that it has was it raised the price not only to the organized group of farmers, but to all producers in that area. The whole general price level come up. And that's what we need in this area, isn't it, Mr. Strait? Boy, it is, especially right now that 50 cents going out. Yes, sir, and this is the way that by building these blocks, we have found that as we increase the size of these blocks all the while by enrolling new producers like yourself and your neighbors, we can keep that pressure and raise the price. Won't be long till we've got the effect of that 50 cents eliminated and can go right up to where you've got a profit. And you'd like that, wouldn't you? Boy, you ain't a kidding. Let me show you, Ted, what happened in 1972, 73, and 74 when we were first beginning this program and expanded it across the nation. This is simply a graph of the M&W series price for a 23-month period. That's just the average price paid for milk in Minnesota and Wisconsin that we like to use for an example here. Many, many dairymen, such as yourself, in that period of time, joined with the organization, paid their $75 a year dues, which is less than 22 cents a day, and in doing that, they were able to raise that price from $4.90 in May of 72 to where it hit $8.15 in March of 74. Mm -hmm. That is a $3.25 per hundred weight increase. You could use that kind of increase this year, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. Needed. Mr. Strait, do you use your personal name or do you use a farm name? Farm yeah. name. What is that? Mm. <laughs> Half Rock past acres. acres, isn't it? Rock acres. Yeah. Rock acres. And this is Adams County, Iowa. Uh, now, just to show you the kind of service we've got, I already know your Social Security number. That's pretty good service, isn't it? 482 660 That's right. Mr. Strait, would you please just authorize this right here? You betcha. And just make that check for $75 out to National Farmers Organization. Yeah. Thank you. Now, Ted, what day would be best for you to put your milk on the truck? Would Thursday be best or is Friday your day of pickup? I can go tomorrow, partner. We'll have the truck here at 10 o'clock. Is that fine with you? That fits real good. Okay. Would you just authorize this marketing agreement mm, then with bet you. Ted, congratulations. You have just become a part of the most progressive farm organization out there. Say, is there any of your neighbors around here that I could go talk to today that like yourself? You said right down the road, come on in, I'll get you a list. Why don't you hop in the car and go with me? <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'll play your silly game, why don't I? Because <laughs> I didn't ask you right. Just <laughs> hop in the car and go with me, there Ted. There you go. Thank you, Joe. Pretty hard to object to uh, collective bargaining nationwide in all commodity, isn't it? Very simple and it works. 
We're getting so wound up a lot of times in, in little issues, but you stick with collective bargaining nationwide in all commodity and the benefits of the National Farmers Organization. There's many, many, many of them, and they work. This training program is a two and a half day session where our staff set through. Many of them have been through them six times. A lot of them once, anywhere from one time through six, depending on how long they've been here. We're going to continue them and we're going to upgrade them. I encourage each and every one of you to get a hold of the area director in your area and find out the schedule of when they're having training stations like this. And we welcome you to come set in for all of it if you can, any part of it that you can, or whenever you can. There's been a lot of areas uh, that I know of, particularly Indiana, out east, and different places that have had special member meetings for that purpose, training sessions for them. All it is is giving us a better way to communicate. We've found that in the National Farmers Organization, there's only one thing you've got to do, is once that people understand the National Farmers Organization, there is no problem at all. They enroll and participate 100 percent, don't they? And this session, the training that we can give and assist and aid you in, and if a better way to do it, we'll get collective bargaining done a lot quicker. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. How many of you would be willing to attend a training session in your area? I want to see the hands. Quite a few out there. We have established our staff with these area directors of training so that they will be able to aid you in this type of a training program. And really, the more you get into it, the more fun it really becomes. They'll teach you about the buying signs and this type of thing. And, and really, it's amazing how once you recognize these, you can tell whether a person is listening or not. You can stand up here and look out here at the audience and really tell who's paying attention and who isn't. If you've got some guy out there that's got his arms folded and his legs crossed, believe me, the chances are he's not listening at all. <laughs> In fact, as an example, I had a salesman a, a short time ago that did a real good job on me in nailing down an appointment for a Sunday afternoon. I didn't want him there that Sunday afternoon, but he closed good enough that before I realized it, he had set up an appointment. Now, he did all the things correct. He even called up 10 minutes before he arrived to make sure I was still home. But as he sat across the table from me, I was determined, I, even though he had got into my house, I was determined that I was not going to buy his product. So. His 45-minute approach or uh, visit period and presentation, I sat there with my arms folded and my legs crossed and I looked out the window. And he went through his complete pre presentation and did an excellent job. When he got all through, and he never did close, he never did ask me to go along with his program. So when he got all through and got to the door, I said, you know, you made one big mistake. You never really asked me to buy your product. He said, I knew you weren't ready. He said, the buying signs were wrong. You weren't paying attention to what I was saying. I was, but I, because of the signs that I gave him, and he read them correctly, he knew that he couldn't make that sale that day. These are some of the things that you can learn from going through these training sessions. Now, do any of you have any idea why we have conducted this type of a session here today? It's been enjoyable, hasn't it, to listen to these people? And they have answered some of the objections that you hear out in the field, right? Most of them, almost every one of them, if you go out and go up and down the road and talk to your neighbors, you're going to get these same objections in one form or another. And most of us, when we hear them, what do we do? If we don't know how to answer it, we don't make the sale, do we? In fact, usually we'll try to change the subject off onto something else and forget to even ask that person to enroll in the National Farmers Organization. The reason we're doing this is because dairy 
the dairy industry is faced with some pretty hard times out here. Would all of you agree with me on that? That things are going to get pretty darn rough before the winter's over. And that if we aren't very, very careful, we're going to lose many, in particular, of the good young dairymen that we've seen springing up out here in just the last few years. There might be some of us older ones, too, that might not make it, don't you think? We need your assistance out there to put production on a milk truck. At the last meeting, we had Phil Costello sitting back there, who is the market administrator for Federal Order 30. And he come up to me before the last presentation. He says, Al, you said yesterday that 30 producers in Wisconsin moved the M&W series price. He says, you don't really believe that, do you? Is there any of you people out there that don't believe that 30 producers can raise it? Believe me, every producer today is so important to every company that they're shipping to. If one of them even thinks about changing his market today, by the next morning there'll be at least four fieldmen on his farm. The one that's trying to keep him and three or four others that are trying to get him to go to their plants. Do you think producers aren't important out there? And when a producer moves, how do they go about getting him back? It's only one way they've got to do it. They raise the price, don't they? And the minute they raise the price, it raises the series price, the M&W series price, all across the country. We mentioned earlier in one of the presentations how the series had gone up two cents and two cents, ten cents in October. November, from all reports, that series should have gone up again another seven to eight cents, but they're playing with it right now. That's going to catch up with them. But they played with it this last time. But if we can do it with 30 producers, think what we could do if we really went out and moved production. Now, it's your ball game. It's up to you as the members out here of how fast we want to move. How many of you know how much production, the goals that have been set for your counties? I want to see your hands. How many of you have had a goal set out there and you know what it is? Those of you that don't, get with one of your staff people and find out what the goal is for your area. We have got them set and we know what can be done as we put this production on the truck. They're going to start, they're not going to start, they've already started taking out a 50 cent tax the first of this month. Any other business, if they were assessed a 50 cent tax, would turn around and put it onto their cost of production. Don't you think that we as dairy farmers should do the same thing? We've got the tools, we've got the capabilities of doing it. For the last year, everyone has told us that the attitude is changing out in the country. Have any of you heard that? That the attitude is changing out there? That it's easier to talk to farmers today than it was a year ago or two years ago? We've heard that all year. But you know, we don't know how to bargain with attitude. It takes production. In the last year, our growth rate our production added to the truck only amounted to about 2 to 3 percent. In the years prior to that, it had been up 10 to 12, 13 percent each year. Last year, it only increased by 2 to 3 percent. Even though the attitude was good out there. Now, since the start of this fiscal year, in other words, in the last two or three months, we've changed that around and we've gone back up to where we're running at about our 8 to 10 percent increase. With your help and your assistance, we can even double or triple that. I really think we need to take a disastrous situation and turn it into a real benefit for all dairymen. We talked about the lawsuit yesterday, 
And how many of you really believe that we're going to win a complete victory in the courts of this land? It's not through the legal sources that we're going to win. It's going to be right out there on the farms. It's that production that's going to count. We also are going to be presenting, or have presented back in Kansas City, a solution to the farm situation out here. We presented a cull cow program that is so simple and so workable that no one would listen to it. In fact, I'm a, I think they were afraid that had they undertaken something like that, they might have gotten rid of enough production that they'd have actually shorted this country. It worked in Canada, and it can work here. We're going to be working and talking with other groups, with the Department of Agriculture, and trying to instigate this type of a program. But it's the production out there that's going to tell the story. We're on the right track, and we're moving forward. But it's going to take your help in order to get it done. We've left out quality completely in this meeting, but I want Wayne Moore back there. Wayne, raise your hand. He's director of our quality program, and it's been a very important program within our organization. Our quality has continually increased over the years until today we're known as a quality market. And it's very important that we keep it that way. The better the markets, the better the quality, the better the markets. And this time, right now, when everybody's talking about surpluses, our people are all reporting shortages. They've got more markets than what they can fill. The state of Wisconsin could use a million pounds of milk a day without ever having to look for one more market. The boys out east, every area that we've got in this country today can use the production they've already got the markets lined up. All it takes is your production to do it. So at this time, I'm going to open it up. Have we got some time left? Open it up for some question and answers, and I'm going to have these boys, Ted, get up here, and, and uh, if there's any questions, we'll, we'll answer them. Any questions out there? Gosh, the last, yes. What you're saying is the fact that the service he's receiving right now from the man that he's married to, whether it be his milk caller or his dairy representative from another co-op or whatever it is, is a very important figure, and it is. And the way we have to handle that is assure and build the credibility that he's going to receive the same amount of service or better service from the National Farmers Organization he's receiving right now, plus all the rest of the added benefits, you know, too. Any other questions? Yes, Dave, you want to say anything? You asked if it would be possible to have the group that was sitting up here work in eastern Wisconsin for a while. I'd like to make a comment on that. If you look down the aisle, there's a lady sitting all ways down, Helen Zebsick there, who tells me that at one time I was bashful and didn't know how to say a word. But it was through the training of the organization that gave us the ability to present the program as we did, and that's why we're encouraging everybody to set up these training sessions in their area 
so that everybody has the opportunity to be able to explain the program in such a manner. And if we have thousands of people that, out here that can do the job, it's going to go fast. Thank you, Dave. I think that you've got to remember, too, these people here are the area directors of training that represent every area in the United States out there. We have a dairy program. There's also many, many, many staff that has been through <laughs> these training stations that Al has given to them, I've given to them, and these gentlemen right here have given to them that are very qualified, and the dairy bargaining committees out there also. The grassroots structure, though, it's, uh, it is a definite must. It is out there to, to assist you in that. We yes. will be going with more drive, more national drives. Again. Yeah, uh, the more national drives, the uh, drives that we've had set up in the past uh, have been very effective and they're very good at training because we go out and we have a drive, we come in each night and critique each man on his presentations of why he was successful, the good points on it, where he failed, you know, and everything. And I'll, I'll give you a little example here, if I may. Joey Leaf, Hayden. Joey Hayden, the fieldman from Kentucky, was just doing one little bitty thing wrong. We was out in a drive in Pennsylvania, and Joey has a very good presentation of collective bargaining nationwide in all commodity, but he wasn't successful. There was 10 of us out there, and we were each coming in each night with some success and stuff like this, and Joey went the first couple, three days with none at all. So I went with him, and what he was doing was failing to turn on the man's receiver in the approach to begin with, so he would give him the opportunity to talk to him. Remember what I said, you answer three questions, who you are, who do you represent, and why should I take time to listen to you? And Joey was going out and introducing himself. He says, my name is Joey Hayden. I'm with the National Farmers Organization. And uh, I'd like to have a little bit of your time. Well, the guy says, I'm busy. So I said, Joey, all you got to do is use a simple one of saying, my name is Joey Hayden. I'm with the National Farmers Organization. And I come to talk to you today about how to put more money in your pocket. And you'd like that, wouldn't you? So Joey studied it in his mind. And he worked it, and he worked it, and he worked it. Well, he goes out there, and he come back in that next, that next day. And he says, Ted, something horrible happened. I says, what's that? And he says, I went out there to the first guy, and I says, Mr. Paris, Mr. Joe Paris. He says, my name is Joey Hayden. I'm with the National Farmers Organization, and I come to show you today how to put more money in my pocket. And you'd like to see more money in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> the cute point of it was, and the guy says, yeah, I know exactly how you're going to do it. I've got an attorney's request up here on my desk that you're suing me for $600 worth of back dues. <laughs> Joey says, I didn't get the guy. <laughs> That's, that's a true story, but he did get three that day and signed another one at a meeting at night. That was his only little problem. And things like this, we work out on these drives. We'll be holding a lot more of them. These gentlemen here, like Al mentioned before, are holding drives in their own area, dang it, every week somewhere. Wisconsin's been using a lot of them. Uh, Minnesota, Ohio, all the places have been using a lot of drives on their own base. Out east, Kenton has a drive maybe with two people every day you know, critiquing and working on it. So, works very good. Yes, you have your hand up, man. Yeah, I'd like to uh, know how, to, how we can get more information, uh, more books to many, uh, many of these guys in the farm out there to, uh, you know, like uh, the crops of cow diversions, uh, bottom milk and stuff like this. It shows that a lot of, say, uh, like my, my area, uh, Mr. Milk is, is selling so much to CDC. Mm -hmm. And uh, the market for that whole milk is, is such a all the seed work is done for the people. Mm -hmm. To answer your direct question, what you're wanting is, uh, like you say, more ammunition, product knowledge, go out there and hit them with. And uh, your national director up there has already asked me, and I do have that particular sheet that I'm getting together for him on, on your particular instance. The reporter, how many of you have read the centerfold of the reporter on a special dairy issue? Huh? There's quite a bit in this. And what you, pardon? Yeah, they're available at the dairy booth. Also the brochures and stuff like this. The only thing that I want to caution you on a little bit here, too, that we found is in the presentation, the proper presentation, you have an approach where you turn on his receiver, a visit period to set the stage, and to get an I like you in there. If you'll notice what Joe done, he visited with me about my harvesters, turned it around from a negative to a positive. That doesn't always happen, but uh, a lot of times you set the stage with an I like you. Then you give the positive presentation. So many times we found, and we're, we're not understanding out here why this man hasn't joined.